October 2nd, The Guardian Angels. One of the most consoling doctrines of the Catholic Church and most admirable proofs of God's love for man is the communion or spiritual intercourse which exists between mankind and the blessed angels who surround the throne of the Almighty. These glorious spirits, so pure, so amiable, so beautiful, so wise and powerful, are appointed by God to be our protectors and intercessors during our mortal life and our companions for all eternity in the glory of paradise. He has given his angels, says the psalmist, charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. In their hands they shall bear thee up, lest perhaps thou dash thy foot against a stone. But besides the general charge which God has given to his angelic host, to be the protecting spirits of mankind, his tender providence has assigned to each individual of the human race a special angel to be his guide and guardian during his pilgrimage on earth. This loving, powerful and faithful friend is given us to direct our steps aright amid the snares and pitfalls which beset us in our path to heaven, to protect us from the malice of the evil spirits and to bring us succor in all our necessities, both of soul and body. Such, though not actually defined as an article of faith, has been the constant belief of the church in all ages and is confirmed by numerous passages of Holy Scripture. When the patriarch Jacob, on his deathbed, stretched forth his hands to bless his two grandchildren, Ephraim and Manasses, he prayed in these words, The angel that delivereth me from all evils, bless these boys. So also, when Judith returned home from her victory over Holofernes, she glorified God, saying, His angel hath been my keeper, both going hence and abiding there and returning from thence. We read also in the Acts of the Apostles that, when St. Peter, after his escape from prison, appeared again among the faithful, they could not at first believe that it was really he, but said to one another, It is his angel. And our blessed Lord himself clearly alluded to the same truth when he said, See that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Nor is it only individual men that are placed under the guardianship of particular members of the angelic hierarchy, but nations also, as we see from Holy Scripture, where mention is made of the angel of the Greeks and of the Persians, and where St. Michael is spoken of as the special guardian of the Jewish people. O oh, wonderful condescension, O oh, excess of goodness and love, cries out St. Bernard, he hath given his angels charge over thee. Who is he that hath given this charge? To whom? And of whom hath he given it? And what is its meaning? It is the Lord of angels, the supreme majesty of God, who hath laid a command upon his own angels, those sublime and blessed spirits who approach so near to the divine majesty, and it is the care of thee that by this sacred command he hath entrusted to them. And what art thou? What is man but rottenness, corruption and food for worms? But what dost thou think that he hath commanded them concerning thee? that they guard thee, that they keep thee in all thy ways. Nor do they loiter. They even bear thee up in their hands, as it were, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. With what diligence do they watch over us, who are committed to them by the strict charge and appointment of God himself? Another motive which endears us to our guardian angels is their tender charity and compassion for us. They consider that we are one day to be their companions in eternal bliss, and that even we are, by grace and the divine adoption, their brethren and fellow members in God. On the other hand, they see the miseries of sin into which we have fallen, the dangers which surround us, the evils under which we groan. Their compassion is the more pure as their charity is the more perfect, and as they are nearer to the infinite source and fountain of love. Hence, they watch over and guard us with great care and diligence, defending us from the evil spirits, sustaining us in our combats, offering at the throne of God our sighs and petitions, and conveying to us the succor of his grace. Oh, blessed forever be the divine goodness for having committed us to the care of such powerful and prudent guardians, and for the tender love and constant vigilance with which they fulfill their charge. 